Welcome to the Why do we wear Mjölnir? Probably the most important piece of jewelry of the Viking Age and Norse pagan spirituality in general. Now if you follow my channel or know anything about primitive religions around the world, pretty much every belief and act and ritual is done for some reason. You know, certain cultures may have lost that understanding, but originally everything humans do was for a reason. Today we just wear some jewelry because it's pretty and it shows off status, and ancient peoples did this too, 100%, uh, but there's a much deeper meaning and purpose to wearing all these medallions and jewelry and talismans that humans have done over the ages. And today we are speaking about our beloved Mjölnir, Thor's hammer. And as a background, I thought I'd show you some videos from my trip back home to Norway so you can see the beautiful nature here. Um, one of the reasons for my trip back home to Norway was to source items for my shop, and I'm very happy now to be carrying some amazing Mjölnir necklaces and bringing these to the US for people to own. I am so sick of all these online shops selling so-called Viking jewelry, and they're just ripping you off. There's an endless supply of massive, flamboyant, ugly Thor's hammer necklaces made from cheap materials in China. Guys, these are for the cringe pagans, okay? <laughs> this is not you guys. Matter of fact, I'll even show you where these people get uh, these necklaces. They buy them online here uh, for four or five bucks, and then they sell them for 50 bucks. All the jewelry that I carry is made from great materials, silver, bronze, even gold coming, and everything is based off of the actual archaeological finds from the Viking Age. And the prices are actually not even that much higher than the stainless steel cringe pagan garbage mere independence that you see on all these drop shipping online shops. And of course, all of mine are made in Scandinavia. These are the exact types of things that would have been worn by pagans in the Viking Age from the same materials. So check that out if you're interested. Uh, link to my shop is in the description below for people who haven't... Uh, seen it. Um, international shipping not available yet, but it will be in the next couple weeks. So check back if it's uh, uh, not available now. But now to speak about Mjölnir. Uh, disclaimer, this video is just my thoughts. I went over the attestations and translations and other theories in this video here that I did a while back, but in this video I'm speaking about just my thoughts and it's not in the common uh, academic style that I usually use, but in my opinion and in the opinion of a lot of other great scholars on the Norse myths, I think it is very clear that Mjölnir represents our heart or our heartbeat. Thor is our life force and the energy field around all living things. We can maybe call it the aura, um, as I have uh, spoken about in videos before. And Mjölnir, Thor's hammer, is the driving power of that life force, right? In humans, that's our hearts, that's our heartbeat. But in other things in nature, it's different things. Remember, our myths are multifunctional and don't just represent body parts, as some people have accused me of believing. The myths are symbolic, but that doesn't make us atheists, that makes us animist. And when humans wear Thor's hammer amulets like this, it's a classic example of animist, sympathetic magic, in my opinion. What is sympathetic magic? Well, for those of you who don't know, it's basically doing an act that would imitate uh, something else and create the desired effect in the nearby vicinity, okay? Voodoo dolls are a perfect example of this, but honestly, there have been some uh, uh, experts on the subject that have said that Almost all magic and religious practices around the world from primitive cultures can be attributed to sympathetic magic. A great book about that is called The Golden Bow. Uh, that link is below too for anyone who wants. So by wearing these uh, Mjölnir pendants and keeping them strong and vibrant and good materials, the idea is that you also keep your heart beating strong and keep generating that powerful life force within us. It sounds kind of crazy, but let's look at the translation and original meaning of Mjölnir. There are a couple debated etymologies of the word, but one great one is that Old Norse Mjölnir 
uh, is related to Old Norse mala, meaning uh, to grind, and also Gothic malvian, uh, meaning to grind. So Mjölnir, uh, possible translation meaning the grinder. And this comes from Proto-Germanic Meldunyas, and from also Proto-Indo-European Melden. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but those both mean lightning. So we think, actually, that in very ancient times that the original meaning of this word was something like a grindstone or a flintstone used to start fires. Uh, one theory even that I've read is that people originally actually believed that there was a divine being up in the sky uh, striking two flintstones together to create lightning and this is what we experience lightning to be, just like we humans do it to create a spark and light a fire. This is why Thor and Mjölnir are always very closely connected to lightning. But let's look at another name for Mjölnir. It's referred to in some texts as uh, Old Norse Hamad, derived from the Proto-Germanic Hamadas, meaning hammer, or even in older times a tool with a blunt surface, and even further back to the Euro uh, Indo-European Hemko. Probably not saying that right, but there you go, and that means stone. So yeah, this is probably a word that goes back all the way to a time where humans didn't even have hammers. We just used a stone to bang on things when we needed to. Now, this is where it gets interesting. What have humans previously done with stones and hammers? Well, they hammer on things, they beat on things, just like this. What does our heart do? It beats. What does a heart look like? A stone. <laughs> what did humans in pagan times used to carry around their necks hanging from our chest? Mjölnir, or a hammer, and in even older times, stones or clubs as, uh, as necklaces. We have archaeological finds that you see here from ancient Rome and Greece showing something like this that we think is the Club of Hercules, and it's worn as a pendant, just like in the Viking Age they wore Mjölnir. Hercules and his club is the equivalent of uh, Thor and Mjölnir. So this claim that scholars have made sometimes that the, the Thor's hammer necklaces we find in the Viking Age are just a response to the Christian cross coming in is absolute bullshit. <laughs> yeah, possibly in the late Viking Age it's kind of the first time that they formed it into a nice piece of jewelry. Um, uh, but humans have been wearing things like this for the same purpose long, long before Christianity even existed. So, back to the function of Mjölnir. When you wear a stone or a hammer or a club around your neck, it can possibly be interpreted as an example of sympathetic magic, right? You keep the stone or the hammer around your neck strong, sturdy, just like an amulet close to your chest. So that keeps your heart beating strong and sturdy. You can think of the stone or a hammer just like a voodoo doll is to a human being, but the stone or the hammer is a voodoo doll for the heart. You keep it strong, well kept, keep it beating so that your heart keeps beating strong. Now that not only keeps your heart healthy, but it keeps your life force and your whole aura strong. Everything, you will become more vibrant and healthy better vibes, better uh, energy, your heart is the center of your existence, and it's also uh, having a strong electromagnetic field around it, just like our world has. This is why Thor and Mjölnir are multifunctional, it's not just us humans who are alive and have a consciousness and a spirit, it's everything, even the world as a whole, this is what animism is all about. I know it all sounds crazy. But I can admit I have some personal experience with this, and I think the rest of you do too. Can't you feel a difference when you put a Mjölnir on? Uh, don't you feel a little bit more powerful and vibrant when you put your beloved Thor's hammer necklace on? For me, it's actually gone a lot further than that. I can speak quickly about my story uh, before I finish the video. I had actually gotten out of the habit of wearing my Mjölnir daily over the past few years and I could notice the lower energy and just a few months ago actually I caught that one disease that's going around lately and it was bad and I ended up in the hospital. The hardest part of that 
was what actually came after I was released. Uh, drowning in medical bills, a frail shadow of my regular self, lost 15 kilos, I could barely breathe for months. My MMA training was going down the shitter with injuries after one another, and all the other problems in life started to pile up, and it was one of the most difficult times I've, I've faced in my life. On top of that, I actually developed a pretty serious heart problem that is a known after effect of that disease that I'm not going to speak about here. I really did not see any way out of the hole I was in. And maybe it didn't seem like that from the videos you were watching of me a few months ago because I always try to come across happy. Uh, but I really did not want to be alive at the time. So then I decided the hell with it. I had this idea about Mjölnir and its purpose for a long time and I got my uh, old Mjölnir pendant actually as a gift when I was a kid. And when I was born, I was born with a hole in the heart. And that too healed itself. So I decided I would start to wear the Mjölnir on a daily basis as I used to. Not only that, I got an upgrade. I bought a really nice silver one like you see here and it absolutely helped it sounds crazy, but my heart problem went completely away within a few weeks. Not only that, but my cardio and my lungs came back stronger than ever before, and I just started to feel better in general, more vibrant, stronger, stronger energy and life force. I also hit a string of good luck, actually, with business and some investments, and that ended up paying for most of the medical bills. I know it all sounds like a bunch of crap, and maybe it's the placebo effect, maybe not. I don't expect you guys to believe it. Uh, in fact, I don't want you guys to believe it. These are my spiritual experiences and I have formed my beliefs based on the things that have happened to me. And you guys need to form your own experiences and, and beliefs uh, based on what uh, happened to you. All that I can offer is historical research and my ideas. Um, now there are a lot of people t online talking absolute crap about what Mjölnir is and what it is. I can't promise that I'm right and they're wrong. I can't promise that I'm right uh, that it was actually worn for this purpose in the Viking Age and before. But at least my explanation about Mjölnir lines up with the Norse sources that we have and also other animist cultural beliefs from all over the world. And it also fits well with my story. So those are my thoughts. Let me know what you guys think. If you don't have a Mjölnir necklace already, get yourself one. Um, preferably one that you value, hopefully with some good materials and not made in China. And, you know, keep it well maintained. Wear it daily, but keep, take care of it. Um, do any of you have any of these types of necklaces already? Do you have any good Mjölnir pendants? Have you noticed any differences or good experiences or boosted aura or life force? Let us know your story in the comments. That's why I make these videos so we can compare ideas to uncover the lost beliefs of our ancestors. But that's all I have to say for today. Hope that was thought provoking at least. Vi ses nästa gång.